He may look like a mild-mannered man taking a stroll in the woods, but don't be fooled. With the coast clear, he nips behind a tree and transforms himself into the human leaf. It's not the most flamboyant of costumes, but he needs to be brown, buff and beige if he is to defeat his nemesis, the fox. We're just going to have an experiment, have a call and just see exactly how close we can get some of the foxes. Unfortunately, as you'll, uh, you'll see in here, the conditions today are about the worst you could possibly want for calling foxes. I think we're going to have to rely on um, one of the, the harsher calls to punch into the wind to try and call the foxes from uh, up the hill in front of us. So uh, we'll give it a go and see what results we get. The plan is simple. How close can the human leaf get to this most cunning of adversaries? It's going to require stealth, skill and a very tight-fitting ghillie suit from Jack Pike. David knows Roy can see a fox, but frustratingly he's too low and can't see over the rough stuff. But Roy is happy with the first blast. With the little setup that we had there, a vixen had made her way down and had tucked up behind a log about 20 yards away from me, no more than 20 yards, and she was just sitting there. I was just scanning around and the only thing I saw was the white underside of her jaw as she was just trying to make out what was going on. And she sat there for about 10 minutes and where we were obviously dressed like this, um, you know, obviously she didn't know what was going on. The interesting part is, if we'd been standing there with a shotgun, she would have been shot and it would have been over and done with and you wouldn't have seen the behaviour going on. She just didn't have the confidence to come in the last 15 yards. But again, with this wind, it's not surprising because they, they don't like committing 100% with this wind. The second stand is a great place to show this suit off to its best. This time, Roy decides to lie low. He does like experimenting with calls, but when he gets the silver fox call out, you just expect there to be some excitement. This time, we get a glimpse of what can happen. David anticipates the fox appearing on the other side of the tree, but he stands there, eyeballing Roy. Then he does one. Roy flaps around, thinking we have world-class footage. Instead, the gods are against us once again. I've never, never done this before in, in this sort of scenario when I'm not shooting. So you, when you see a fox coming in at you like that at high level, you're just thinking, do I want to carry on calling? Is it going to carry on? But um, he just came in and he, he couldn't make out that I was a person, but he just sort of looked and was a little bit uneasy. But bearing in mind, he was, as I say, no more than eight yards away there. Um, so yeah, plenty of time to shoot him with a shotgun that you, uh, you couldn't have missed. Well, I could have done, but uh, hopefully not. Having got so close, we take the bold step of dedicating more than an afternoon of filming to this subject matter. For this next outing, the human leaf enlists his sidekick, the incredible Hairy Bulk. He too, despite his size, is cuttlefish-like, becoming one with his environment. The two of them look like a formidable pair, and surely no fox in the land would ever think danger lurks around the next tree. <laughs> Alas, it's a no-show on this one. The incredible hairy bulk is sent back to get the Leafmobile. It's like Baywatch for Yetis. Our next position delivers the wrong sort of canine and Roy has to explain to the owners what we're up to. As usual, he's as polite and friendly as he can be, despite being dressed as a hedge. Nothing, no, we're calling foxes. Trying to, uh, trying to just uh, reduce the fox population. For the third stand of the day, we're back where we had this response a few months ago. Again, it's a 360 degree gamble as to where we stand for a fox response. The law of SOD again comes into play. Unseen by the camera, Dom has a fox appear within a few yards and say hello. Roy keeps calling and a minute later, a second one comes into range. So we'd got in position and literally as soon as Roy started calling, I turn my head to one side and the fox is already there, five yards away. Obviously it picked up the movement. Um, as, I, as I turned my head, bolted, and by the time I'd got my gun up and were taking the shot, it just cut behind the tree stumps. And uh, unfortunately I missed and I was, I was a bit frustrated because I thought I might have ruined the stand. Um, but uh, Roy is a man of greater perseverance than I and uh, carried on calling. Uh, and it wasn't long before we saw another little uh, bit of movement over towards the bramble patch. Um, and it was fox number two, and I'll, I'll let Roy explain that because he was rather more successful than I was. Normally I don't call and persevere that much after a shot's gone off, 
them you know, a few calls and just see if there's anything else. But you know, we called again um, and, and really gave it some, and we got the, the second fox coming out. So, uh, so yeah, very pleased with that. It's just a, uh, a shame that we didn't get that one on camera. It's a great result, but again, we failed to get the shot of the human leaf plus confused fox in frame. We dedicate another day to the cause. This time we get two responses. The first fox goes unseen until Roy stands up. It's tucked up in the brambles, 30 yards away. This one spots the camera. Right, never before has so much time been spent trying to get the perfect shot on Field Sports Channel. Roy knows the ghillie suit works, but we want that five yard image. This time we've brought more cameras, however the GoPro becomes a no pro and dies, so we're down to two. It takes at least five minutes for our first fox to appear in the undergrowth. Who knows how far he's come? David spots him, but Roy has no idea we have a customer. Before he gets too close, he is startled by an unruly cameraman. Rather than just concentrating on the, the sound, he was sort of trying to look and see what was going on as well. He probably just picked up a bit of the camera movement or a, a bit of David uh, flicking about there. So David has got the tendency to be a little bit like a meerkat when anything goes on. So it's just, ooh, ooh, ooh. And you, can't, you just can't have sharp movements when you're foxing. Everything's got to be very, very slow, just twisting and just looking very, very softly. But David hasn't quite managed to get that yet. He's uh, too much of an excitable child. Right, we know foxes are receptive today, so we at least feel we have a chance here. Roy puts himself inside an old pheasant pen. One camera is facing away down a ride and the other is going to try and stay still. Again, Roy can't see the incoming fox. It moves quickly to start with, then slows and stops. Moving off, we try and anticipate where it will emerge from the brambles. Finally, Roy spooks it, trying to make sure the camera is on it. It's not a totally clean shot, but we hope it's proved a point. Just so there's no confusion, the arrow shows where the fox ended up. Hunting is all about understanding your quarry. It's also about appreciating your quarry as well. It's not just about going out there and, and killing and slaughtering. Obviously, when we're shooting foxes, we do that for a reason. We're having to control the numbers, but you still respect and admire your quarry. Um, and part of that admiration is understanding your quarry, understanding the animal and just seeing exactly what you can do. And for me, that was just brilliant being able to, uh, to get that close to one. And, you know, in, uh, in all honesty, it's, uh, it's nice just to tip your cap and uh, let them on their way. The, the ground we're on at the moment, um, they're, not off, they're not posing any threat to, uh, to any game or livestock. Obviously, you know, we're not silly. We realise that they're going to move on from here and come on to other land, but then they'll have to be dealt with. But, uh, all the time they're in here, then uh, yeah, we can uh, we can leave them be and uh, have a little bit of fun. With his work complete, the human leaf returns home safe in the knowledge that he can still bring foxes into places that other callers can't.